Hey guys, this is Shane with the Act Angling Magazine. We're going to be taking a closer look at the new Wilderness Systems Attack 140 today. We'll do a little walk around and review some of the key features and the designs that went into building this boat. And then we'll give a little bit of feedback on what we've experienced on the water uh, spending some sea time with it. So when I initially wanted to do this review, I was going to go over each individual trait of the attack and it um, came out a little bit boring. So instead, as this plays and as I walk around this kayak, um, I'm going to give you a little bit of my experience about it. You can see the nose is very narrow, the deck height is narrow, and uh, it does actually shed a lot of wind. That was one of the big features of this new design. Um, it makes it easier paddling into a gust um, or a headwind. Uh, the handles are very sturdy. They're painted black though, and they get extremely hot. I've melted my hand several times trying to grab it and lift it up into the truck. Um, so I might put some foam around that or something to uh, deter the heat. I did like the big hatch up front. It's got the uh, the rod holders there. It's got places to mount uh, any kind of mounting hardware you wanted to, and then a place for your paddle. Um, the inside does not have access to the hole. Um, most fishing kayaks, I think you'll see, do have access into the hole in the front. But I like this one um, not having access into there. You still got huge storage, and if you see in the front there, uh, there is a flat surface for you to install. Uh, a hatch entrance there if you wanted to go that route. You got some mounting points there that you can put bungees on or I usually use it for strapping when I'm hauling the attack. So coming down into the middle of the boat um, you can see the concealed flooring and the uh, rails. We've got two sets of rails in the middle that the seat is mounted on. Uh, you can adjust the trim, we'll show you that in a little bit. You've got two sets in the front and one on the rear uh, lid. Uh, the center console you've got a removable deck here you unscrew that knob and you can pull that whole thing off it's got a cup holder and some other areas for mounting. Uh, the flex pod I've got my low ramps mounted there you've got the entire setup the battery the transducer everything's right there so you can grab it and go when you're storing the kayak or when you're uh, if I'm going into the store or something I'll put it in there. Love the padding it's very soft you got the conceal there again um, great standing area, big open deck. Handles on each side, they don't pass through so they're not good for looping a strap round or something when you've got it in the truck, uh, but they help you carry the boat when you have to. Um, you got the seat on the rails, that's the high position, that's the low, and it's got a third option there, the recline, if you wanted to go duck hunting or if you just want to get some sun. Uh, Wildy isn't going to judge you about that, so you can take it out there and uh, get in your bikini, whatever you wear. In the back you've got the mounting points here and um, on the other side in the back there for the 3D seat, the leaning seat that helps you stand and fish more. you got more mounting places there into the rear tank well. And then again back here you've got the two rails, uh, one on each side for additional mounting points. The rear lid also has a rail built into it. On the inside you've got some rod storage. Um, supposedly you can store six rods there. I've had four uh, when I'm traveling and there was no problem. They didn't get snagged. They didn't have any damage. Uh, so that's a really cool feature. Um, there's no way to lock that though. So if you're going to be storing it, you still want to make sure that it's in a safe place. Otherwise uh, you won't have any rods to go fishing with. On the back you've got a mounting area. You've got the pre-installed bolts there for mounting any kind of shallow water anchor or trolling mode, whatever you want to do there. Um, paddle keeper strap there behind the seat on the rail. Um, to adjust the trim on the seat you've got the two knobs on each side you just unscrew those and the seat will slide pretty easily up and down the rail. Um, if you wanted to adjust the trim for covering distance you move it up a little bit or if you want to have a little bit more lift on the nose you can put it back. Um, so again that's just an overall look at the boat. It's been great to me. It's definitely a great paddling boat. 34 inches wide so you've got the stability there um, which I do like and at 14 foot 1 inch it's got the speed as well. Um, I'll show you in a little bit here uh, some paddling. I didn't get any footage of me standing and fishing because my GoPro decided for me to uh, not include that in this review. Um, but it's great for standing. I feel very stable. It's got the secondary stability so you can wobble a little bit and when you find that balancing point it uh, really gives you some confidence. Now I'm by no stretch of the imagination a good paddler. I don't have good technique. Um, I'm working on that, but 
you can see here, yeah I said it, my GPS has me going a little over four miles per hour and you can see it's not taking much effort. This is a, a sustainable speed. Um, if I'm really working I can get up to five miles an hour and hold that for a little while too. So um, I consider that a pretty quick boat. It's much faster than most of the wide kayaks that are primarily for standing that you're going to see out there. So it makes it really fun to paddle. You can get to a spot fast, pop right up, and you're staying and fishing no problem. This is a quick clip I took uh, a couple weeks ago floating down the flint. I am not a very stable person. I'm actually pretty clumsy. I've fallen out of my kayak several times. Um, but here I'm going down the flint. There's a little bit of current here, as you can see. Um, there's some rocks that we're bumping up against too, and I still felt very confident in sight casting. The MSRP is just under $1,800, which is on the higher end for kayaks, but I do think it's a very well thought out boat. I think you've got the stability and the speed um, that very few boats can offer. So uh, that's what we think so far. If you have any more questions, let us know at yakangling.com. Thanks.